everybody. So we're back out in the shop with another daily vlog. And guys, today we're gonna work on this right here. So that chunky EDC Tonto, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you the process of cutting it out, getting it smoothed out and everything on the two by 72. And then we're gonna go ahead and anneal it. And that's pretty much what today's video is all about. So tomorrow's video, we're gonna be doing the bevels and all that stuff, but today, I'm going to show you how I got to this point right here. So let's go ahead, let's jump into it, let's get it knocked out. So we're just going to go ahead and use our angle grinder and a cutoff wheel and just go through and cut this to the rough shape. And I'll tell you, make sure you're cutting on the outside of the line. It's real easy to accidentally let this blade go too far in or to accidentally let the wheel skip up onto the steel and mar the surface. So you just want to take your time, really control the angle grinder, and don't let it get away from you. Because there's going to be times when it's going to try to. And you don't have to get super precise with the angle grinder, because a lot of this stuff is going to be smoothed out whenever you get onto the your 2x72 or your 1x30 or whatever you choose to uh, grind with. Now we're going to use our 2x72 with a 40 grit belt and we're going to go ahead and just square up all the surfaces and get a nice clean edge all the way around it. This takes a little bit because the file is so thick and at this point, again, I haven't annealed it. I don't tend to anneal it until after these steps are done, but again, it's just a personal preference. You can anneal your file whenever you feel like it. This is the process that I do, and it's the process that I like, so that's what I'm doing here. You can also take this time to maybe change a couple of things that looked great on paper, but don't actually work that well in the hand. So there might be some areas that you, you, you shape a little bit differently, like with this. On the template that I did, I had a real sharp angle on the back side of the handle. And whenever I started putting it in my hand, I realized that that wasn't a very good design. So I changed the way that the handle was shaped a little bit on the back section, like what I'm doing right here. I didn't go to what the template was. I went to what felt good in my hand. So. Just because you have a template does not mean that you have to 100% adhere to that template. And this is the reason why I always tell people, if you get a template offline or something like that, it's always better to put it on a piece of wood, cut it out, and make sure that that's exactly what you really want, as opposed to what just looked good on a picture. We're just gonna spend the rest of this time going ahead and getting this ground out. Y'all go ahead and listen to some banjo music. ahead and anneal the steel and this is just bringing it up to non-magnetic and then letting it cool as slow as possible. I let mine cool in the forge. Some people will put it in sand or I mean there, there, there are so many different ways that you can do it. For me I heat it up, leave it in the forge, let it cool for about an hour and then take it out and work with it.
All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's daily vlog. Now, you saw me go ahead, do all the process to get it to this point right here. So we cut it out, went ahead, smoothed it out, and then we went ahead, annealed it, and that's where we stopped so far. Now, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions that people tend to ask me when it comes to the process that I do whenever I'm making file knives. For one, yes, I cut them out before I anneal them. You know, I get a lot of people that ask me, why don't you just anneal it first? Well, when it comes to the cutoff discs, they cut just as easy with the file being hard or the file being soft. It doesn't really matter. Um, if I was going to be using my bandsaw, if I was going to use that, the porter bandsaw, yes, it would make sense to go ahead, anneal the steel, and then cut it out. But for the angle grinder with the cutoff wheel, it cuts just like butter whether it is hard or soft steel, like I just said. So I tend to go ahead and do that. Plus, they're a lot easier to anneal whenever they're smaller pieces. Whenever you have a big old piece of steel and you're trying to anneal it, you have to move it in and out of the fire to be able to get the whole entire thing hot. And then you go ahead and let it cool down. With this, I can heat up this little bitty guy super easily and then let it cool down so it's a lot faster process that's what I do for that and then the other part uh, why do I anneal this steel you know it's already hardened it's already heat treated why not just keep it cool leave it you know leave it hardened in its hardened state and then I don't have to worry about reheat treating the steel for me I've got everything to heat treat so I might as well soften it make it a little bit easier on my abrasives and drill bits and things like that and then just reharden it so that's the whole point behind me doing the processes that I do whenever I'm making my file knives so hopefully that answered a couple of questions uh, guys that's the end of this video if y'all haven't yet give this video a thumbs up share this video or a video I've done in the past and go ahead go down that bottom corner hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell so you get notified for the next few steps that we have so next video we're going to go ahead and uh we're going to do bevels we're going to do holes in the tang and uh it's going to look pretty sick guys thank y'all for coming by thank y'all for spending your time with me y'all have an amazing day i'll see y'all tomorrow